live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Good afternoon, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 19 from Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin. My co-host is Justin Warren, the founder and chief analyst at Pivot9. Justin, great to have you. Great to be here. Sitting next to me in the hosting chair yeah, today. Yeah, always fun. Let's have a great conversation next, shall we? Sure we will. All right, please meet a couple of our guests that have joined Justin and me. I've got Dan Hubbard to my left, CEO of Lacework, and Elon Rabinovich, the VP of product at Datadog. Guys, welcome. Thanks for having us. For having us. Our pleasure. Great to be here. I love, anytime we can talk about dogs, even if there's no relation to the actual <laughs> technology, Two thumbs up for me. So, but let's go ahead. I know that you guys have both been on, or your companies have, but give our audience, Dan, we'll start with you, an, a refresher, an overview. Lacework, what do you guys, what sure. do you do? Yeah, Lacework, we wake up every morning uh, with a goal of trying to help our customers secure their public cloud infrastructure and or any type of cloud native technologies such as Kubernetes or containers or any microservices. So we're a security company for the cloud and cloud native technologies. Awesome, and Elon, give us a refresher about Datadog. Uh, Datadog's a uh, monitoring and analytics platform for your modern infrastructure and applications. So microservices, containers, cloud providers like AWS, we're here at reInvent. Uh, our goal is to help teams collaborate and to understand the health of their business and their applications and their infrastructure. So how do you guys work together? So we recently announced a partnership and an integration of the intelligence and the data of all the risks and the threats that Lacework is identifying, um, being sending those uh, automatically inside of the Datadog platform. So we're, we're putting the data that from our platform uh, directly into obviously the monitoring, the metrics uh, platform uh, of Datadogs. Yep, and so uh, what we, when, when We've, we've, we're pulling um, that intelligence from, from Lacework into our, um, into our platform for our new security monitoring platform in addition to enriching it with metrics from our infrastructure and application monitoring. Um, we find that a lot, of the, uh, a lot of times the first signs that something's going wrong might be a change in how your infrastructure or your applications are performing or a request that came in. And so if we're able to marry the two together, it's just a much better, toge it's a better together story. Um, give people much, uh, much clearer insights into what's going on. So security's been a, a really tricky thing to solve for, well, as long as I've been in computing, which is <laughs> longer than I care to remember. But uh, so to walk us through, what does this extra visibility actually provide to customers? One of the big issues, it seems to be, that security's just too hard. So how does this make security easier for customers? So one of the big trends that we're seeing is that security and infrastructure were, uh, in the past, very separate groups. Silos didn't, many times didn't know each other or talk to each other. But DevOps is becoming a unifying force of data, intelligence, and infrastructure. You know, it's infrastructure as code, it's a little bit different, like AWS, for example, but it still is infrastructure. Yep. So uh, the combination of security and infrastructure comes together when you get DevOps. Some people call it secure DevOps, DevSecOps, Dev yeah. DevOps, whatever you want to call it. But really bringing those two together is finally the first time really where there's a meaningful connection at the data level yep. that allows you to actually combine both. It, 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 exactly, and so as all of these teams are, are taking advantage of infrastructure as code and other DevOps best practices, the security teams are looking at this and saying, how do I get earlier in the cycle? How do I make sure that code is enforcing this so I'm scaling, you know, I'm scaling with automation, scaling with code rather than with people. Uh, and then, as, as they start to do that, they realize that the data that's in the security silo and that's in the application or infrastructure silo uh, is actually very relevant to one another, right? If a crypto miner shows up on your systems, the first thing it's going to do is spike your CPU. Um, the first, you know, something like Lacework will also, you know, will we'll detect that as well. If we both look at both of those signals, we'll detect it faster. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead, Justin. So, this is a bit of, that's the reactive side of, of security, which is, you know, there's a threat happens and you react to that, but part of DevSecOps or whichever term you want to actually use, yeah. part, part of that is to actually shift left and try to put, get rid of these security flaws before they even happen yeah. in the code, which is you know, a lot of, you know, software development, I, I like to say that the first 80% of software development is putting the bugs in and the, the second 80% <laughs> is taking them out again. Yeah. So how do you help developers actually remove all of those security vulnerabilities before they even make it into production code? Yeah. 
So just like metrics and monitoring allow you to look at the quality of your infrastructure or very early in the pipeline, uh, security needs to go there also. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really, there is no time, it's just a continuous cycle. Um, early what we allow you to do is to look at your configuration and check to see if your configuration is changing in a way that is leaving you at risk or an exposure. What's particularly interesting about this partnership is that quite often security people don't know enough about the application or the infrastructure to know if it's a risk. Right. It's actually the DevOps people that know. So security people, when, when we send an alert many times to a security person, they scratch their heads and go, I don't know if this is good, bad, or indifferent. The DevOps people look at it and go, oh yeah, this is definitely okay. Yeah. That's the way our infrastructure should work. This is the way our application should work. Or they say, oh no, this is a big problem. Let's get security involved. So doing that early is really critical. And, and it, again, it's all about breaking down, I mean, if, if DevOps was all about breaking down silos between dev and operations and, and other parts of the business, DevSecOps or Secure DevOps or whatever we want to call it, is, is just bringing more people into the fold and helping security join that party um, and get at things earlier in the cycle so we can catch it before it, you know, before, before there's a breach that's in the news. Right, to be able to be predictive, which is, and then prescriptive, which is what a lot of businesses would love to be able to be. I'd like to get your opinion, Dan, on how cloud native, cloud, and the, tra the transformation of cloud technologies is changing the conversation within the customer base. One of the things Andy Jassy said yesterday is that transformation has got to be driven from the top down, like true business transformation, yep. so that you know, a company isn't Uberized, for example. Are you seeing that, are these, are these, for example, what you're talking about with enlightening the DevOps folks and the security folks, bringing them together so that they can be more collaborative, are you seeing that come from more of a top-down approach in terms of how do we leverage our data better, make sure that we have security and are able to securely extract insights from the data, or is it still kind of from both ends? It, it depends on the company, it's, you know, it's very diverse. Uh, what we see a lot is in large, uh, large companies that are migrating to the cloud, that weren't born in the cloud, every company they're buying is a cloud native company. So they buy these new companies and they look, everyone looks at the new company and goes, wow, that's amazing. They can move so fast. They, they are you know, super forward thinking and they're pushing code and are more efficient than us. We want to do that also. So it just kind of breeds the, the innovation and the speed from an M&A perspective. You know, in the, in the cloud native side, what we see is it depends on your tenure as a company when you really want to take security seriously. You know, usually B2B companies take it more seriously than B2C, for example, but it's usually it's when your customers start asking you how secure are you, is when people start paying attention. Yep. We would like it to be before that, right. but it's not always you know, before that. Yep. I mean, I, I, I think it's from both directions. It depends on the size of the company and the culture, but you, you can't dictate culture, right? So, uh, and a lot, of, a, lot of this, uh, a, lot, a lot of these silos and a lot of these uh, sort of these camps and fiefdoms that start to exist within organizations that have caused these groups to be separate, um, they weren't necessarily top down, it's just, you know, it's, it's human to human interactions. And so you, you, you can't just walk in and say, you must now be collaborative. Um, the executives have to beat that drum and help people understand why that's important to the business. But the folks on the ground have to actually want to be, be friends, want to talk, want to collaborate on projects, want to pull people in earlier. Um, and once they have that human connection, it's a lot more successful. So you have to do both. Yeah, what, what, I mean, what we're seeing is, as IT becomes more distributed, and security is more centralized, you run into problems. So the, the people that are getting it right are, are distributing security as close to those teams, whether it's a scrum team, a weekly get together, you know, whatever it is, uh, to get that human interaction together. Yeah. Because if you don't understand the application and what people are working on, how are you going to understand the risks and the threats and the models? So distributing it is really key. And, and yeah, it's important those security teams understand the business requirements as well. Sometimes the most secure answer isn't necessarily the answer that actually serves your customers. Sometimes uh, some, and, and sometimes app teams don't understand the trade-offs that security people may understand, so it, it, has, to be, it has to be a partnership. Yep. But you, you mentioned cult cultural change is probably harder than anything else, especially if there's a legacy organization, and Dan, to your point, a lot of the acquisitions they're doing are of cloud-native companies who are presumably much fresher, maybe have a younger uh, workforce. That's hard to do. Yep. Ultimately, though, what a business needs to look at is a legacy business, there's probably somebody in my rear view mirror is a lot closer than I might think, yeah. that is more agile, more nimble than we are, yeah. has great technology, and the aptitude and the culture to be able to move faster. Yeah. How do you see some of these enterprises that you work with together, and let's put them in the context of, they're an AWS customer, how are you seeing these enterprise organizations that are adapting 
and acquiring cloud native businesses, how are they able to pivot at the speed they need to, yeah. use cloud technology, understand the security issues that they can remediate, and, and really take that data to what it should be, which is a business differentiator. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of the times you run into the DevOps people say security slows us down, uh, they're getting in our way, and security says developers are insecure, that you know, we're totally going to get breached. So, um, you know, one of our mottos is you got to move with speed and safety. Um, as soon as you get in the way of anything, you know, typically the developer and the application's going to win. So you got to figure out where to get involved in that. In really big companies, what we've seen that are very acquisitive is, they're moving this, uh, security to a central governance role, um, and maybe have tooling and uh, you know, some specialty teams, and then they're distributing security baked as deep into the development infrastructure as they can, and then they have groups which kind of work together uh, you know, broadly across that. So you can structurally set it up that way, I think. Yep. And, and if you have the incentives right, you know, nobody's looking to create a security breach there, or, or a vulnerability. Yeah. They're well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it, engin engineers and, 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 and your employees have your best, the company's best intentions at heart, otherwise they wouldn't, they wouldn't work, you know, work there. So they're looking to do the right thing. You just have to make it easy for them with, and some of that's tooling, some of that's culture, some of that's just starting the conversation, not the day of the release. Start it, you know, um, start it when the, when, the, when, the, when the first line of code's being written, what would it take for us to solve this problem in a secure fashion? And then everybody's happy to work together. They just don't want to redo things, you know, the, the day before the launch and have to, you know, be slowed down. Well, that technical debt becomes a real problem right. if they yeah. have to do that. Yeah. I think one of the great things about, uh, you know, our technical uh, partnership and integration here is security in the past has always been just very binary. Are we insecure or secure? Yeah. Well, that's it. Well, actually, there's all kinds of nuances around it, and that's what lends itself to metrics. Oh. Yeah. You know, what are our metrics? How are we doing? What's our risk? What's our exposures? Is it getting better over time? Is it worse over time? So so there's always the, the doomsday scenario, but there's also the what's happening over time and are we getting better at what we do? And metrics really lends itself and, to that. And that comes right back to that, to that uh, you know, the, some of those DevOps philosophies of continuous improvement and continuous learning. Uh, you know, bringing that into the world of security is, is just as critical. And so you, so you, mentioned, you mentioned culture, you mentioned transformation, you mentioned metrics, uh, three things very close to my heart. Uh, we keep hearing that security is becoming a board level conversation, so a lot of this is very technical and, and DevSecOps is down here with the, the technical people, uh, but that structure of the organization that you referred to and, ch and changing that structure and setting the culture, that tends to come from the top level, and we heard from Andy in the keynote yesterday that that is very, very important. Yeah. So what are the sorts of conversations you're having with senior management and and board level, from what your products do together, what, what does that look like from the board's perspective? So learning to manage risk, looking at how are we doing, yeah. how much of, of what you do is actually available to the board for them to make their job easier? I think one of the exciting trends is that compliance is cool again. Right. Like compliance was never a cool thing, you know? <laughs> compliance is kind of a boring thing, the auditors come in once a year, you know, you get stuck with it and away you go. Um, but now compliance is continuous, it's always running, and it's more about risks and exposures and, and am I adhering to compliance via the risks and exposures. Executives, get ch are, it's very challenging to explain things like Kubernetes and pods and nodes and all this technical acronyms and, and, and mumbo jumbo that we live in every day you know, in this world, but compliance is real. Are we PCI, SOC 2, NIST, are we, are we applying best standards and best practices? So the ability to pull that in either via a metrics dashboard or through measurable things over time I think is really key as part of that. Yep. And, and similarly as, as, as folks are moving, you know, whether, whether they're moving new application, or existing applications from uh, you know, a legacy or on-prem environment into the cloud or building something from scratch, um, it's, you know, visibility on compliance is important. We can bring that into our dashboards, into, our, into the tooling that executives can look at over time. But also just understanding, am I done with the migration? Is my application there? Um, taking this nebulous thing that is a cloud and making it a tangible asset that you can look at and, and see the health and progress on over time in Datadog has significantly sped up many of our customers' cloud migrations. Um, they often get stuck in a sort of analysis paralysis. Are we, are we performing the same as we did in the data center? I don't know. Uh, are we as secure? Can we move this workload? And tooling like Datadog, like Lacework, and the two together helps them put that into something concrete that they can say, actually, yes, we're ready to go, or no, there's these three things we need to do first, let's go do them. 
Um, it, it's really challenging if for um, traditional security people in this new world order because it's very ephemeral. Things change all the time. You know, yep. it used to be like I got five racks, I got 22, you know, 2,200 servers. And these are the IPs, and that's it. Now it's like, what time is it? I don't know what I have. You know, so visibility is key. You used to be able to have a, a server that you might have monitored throughout your tenure at a company. Now you probably can't monitor through the tenure of your lunch. Yeah. yeah. How much? Last question for you guys is how much do you see a, of a lift or an impact from something like the Capital One data breach that happened a few months ago? You talked about you know, B2B being more on it in terms of B2C, but we, we see these breaches that, and many generations that are alive today, understand to some degree, is, is that, in terms of getting insight into where are all of our risks and vulnerabilities and needing to get that visibility on it, do you see some of these big breaches as um, catalysts for businesses to go, whoa, we have a lot at stake here. We don't really un try to understand what the heck's going on yeah. and what we own. Yeah, I mean, uh, security has a very bad reputation of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And, uh, you know, I've been in the, in the industry for a long time. Um, that said, you know, those moments do uh, get up very high, um, especially somebody like Capital One, who's one of the, known to be one of the most sophisticated cloud security organizations on the planet. Um, so it certainly piques people's interests. Um, you know, I think people get carried away maybe on the messaging side of things, but you know, in order for security market to get really big, you have to have a big IT transformation trend, you have to have uh, a very diverse attack surface, and you have to have the beginnings of breach. If you don't have the beginnings of breach, you spend all your time convincing people there may be a problem. Yeah. And because there is problems that are happening almost every week and are getting published, um, and you know, many of them are, are, are being acknowledged uh, you know, publicly, it, it does help, you know, it definitely helps the conversation. I, you know, I, I don't think that, there, there's a lot more, there are a lot more breaches in the news off, to some extent because there's a lot more tech co companies using, going through these digital transformations having tech in the news. I don't know that this is cloud versus not cloud. What cloud does, however, introduce is new concepts and new uh, workflows that security teams need to understand and that application teams need to understand. And so, this is where the new breed of tooling and education comes in, is helping people be ready for that. Um, and yeah, of course, anytime there's a headline on, you know, the big, on any of the big news shows, of course, yeah. the first thing we're going to do is say, yeah. well, clearly there's a, they're going to bring on, they're going to bring on Dan or, you know, uh, one of our security experts or somebody in the industry to talk about how you prevent that in the future. And so, it, it does bring some attention our way, but it's, uh, I think that's great. It's reminding people that what's important. And one of the conversations we have with our prospects is, uh, have you ever had a breach before? You know, they're always going to say no, of course. But then you ask, how do you know? How do you know? Right. You know, how do you really know that? And then let's walk through yeah. how you would actually find that out if you did know. And that's a very different conversation than, oh, in my traditional data center, I would know this way. So it's just very different. Interesting stuff, guys. Thank you for sharing with us and congratulations on the integration with Datadog and Lacework. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Our pleasure. For Justin Morin, I am Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE live from AWS reInvent 19 from Vegas. Thanks for watching.